Editing an image can be as simple as describing what you want, like make his shirt red, or he's sitting at a desk in an office, or make this a pencil sketch. We can do this using tools like the chat editor in Design, which uses models like Flux Context or ChatGPT, whichever one you pick. So how do you know which one to pick? How do these models compare and which one works best? Well, we're going to compare both models using Design's chat editor, using the same starting image and the same prompts and see what works and what doesn't. I'll show you a few comparisons that I've created and then we'll do one together so you can see where to go and how to use the chat editor. And as we get started, thanks to Design for sponsoring this video. Starting with this image of a man sitting outside a cafe, I said the man is talking to a woman who's sitting at the table with him. Flux Context put the woman at the table, and it got rid of the book in the guy's hand. I guess it would be rude of him to keep reading and ignore her. Otherwise, it didn't make any changes except for adding the woman. I can't quite tell what's going on with his hand, whether he's holding a piece of paper or what's happening there. Chad GPT put the woman at the table, but it moved the table out from the wall a bit, and it changed a few other little details, but nothing that causes a problem in the image. And it did change the color of the image, making it a little more yellow or warm, I guess you would say. Next, I tried put a neon open sign in the window. Both models did what I asked, different interpretations of the sign, but that's okay. With flux context, we're starting to lose a little bit of quality in the image, especially in the subject's faces, and that's a known issue with flux context. The more you iterate and make changes on top of changes, quality can degrade. With ChatGPT, our subject's faces have a little bit of a plasticky thing going on, and the color is becoming a bit more yellow. Then I said change the text in the sign from beans and and bagels to wake and bake. Both models changed the text I wanted it to change and got the new text right. That's awesome. Flux lost a little quality in the details of our guy and gal, but ChatGPT, in addition to really yellowing things up, is definitely plasticizing our characters. I thought I'd try a color change on purpose, so I asked it to change the style to a black and white street photo. Flux context seems to have held its own, no major change in the quality this time. ChatGPT made the image black and white, and it added a lot of graininess, which might be a style thing, but the quality's really suffering in our guy and gal. And it looks like he's missing a thumb at this point. Let's switch up to this image of a kitchen, where I started off with change the cabinets to navy blue. Both models did what I asked. They were both able to distinguish the cabinets from the sink and not make it blue, which is great. ChatGPT didn't go crazy, changing a bunch of other details that I didn't ask for. Although at first I thought maybe it did, but then I realized it's because ChatGPT doesn't have a 16 by 9 aspect ratio option, so it cut off a little bit from each side of the image to make it fit its landscape aspect ratio. I asked it to add a vase with sunflowers on the island. Context added the sunflowers and ditched the bowl of fruit, while ChatGPT added the sunflowers without moving the fruit bowl. That surprised me because Context is usually really good about only changing what you ask for, while ChatGPT has a habit of changing other stuff. But not this time. Then I said replace the flooring with black and white tiles. They both did it, each a little bit differently, and that's totally fine. Now on the ChatGPT side, the yellowing is really starting to show at this point. I figured we needed some people in our kitchen, so I said add a man and a woman standing in the kitchen talking. Something seems off with the perspectives or proportions here in the context version. The people just look tiny or something. And that's something I've run into with context before, where it struggles to figure out how big something should be in the relation to the scene or other things in the scene. ChatGPT did a better job, those people look like their normal size, but the whole image is getting pretty yellow, except for this wall oven that's getting really green. Next, I wanted to make it kind of dark outside, but well lit in the kitchen, so I said the kitchen is brightly lit from the interior lights. Outside, seen through the windows, it is late evening. Context nailed it, except maybe the reflection in the wall oven might not be too accurate, and of course our tiny people. And as far as that goes, normally you'd probably want to go back to the last image without the people, try again to get them looking good, and then do the next change from there. For this, I just left my tiny people and kept going. ChatGPT didn't seem to get what I meant by dark outside, but light inside. The interior lights are on, but apparently not putting out much light, and our people are looking a bit plasticky. 
I wanted to work with some kind of branding, so I started with this image of my little logo or whatever and said put this logo on a black baseball cap. Context made the logo kind of big on the cap, but what really impressed me is that it made it look like it was actually embroidered on there. ChatGPT did a better job with the proportions. The logo looks more like the size you'd expect, but it didn't try to make it look embroidered or anything. Next, I said put the hat on a happy man. Both models followed the prompt. With Flux, I'm seeing a little bit lower quality in and around the logo. With ChatGPT, there's a wee bit of noise in the logo, and the hat texture seems to have changed a bit too. Next I said put the man in a modern comfortable home office. These turned out a lot like the last round. Each model did what I asked. A little bit of quality loss mostly in and around the logo with the context version. Both the logo and the man's face in the chat GPT version. The last thing I tried with this was change the color of the walls to dark gray and make one wall a bold orange color. Then I realized there are only two walls so I could have said make one wall gray and one wall orange but I already hit the go button so I just went with it. Both models delivered what I asked for. The quality in the logo area of the hat continues to degrade a little bit with each edit in the context version and the chat GPT version is getting weird with the logo and the face of our subject. Now let's start with a different image and do one together. I'll show you how to get to the chat editor in design. We'll make some changes with flux context and with chat GPT and we'll see how they turn out. Once you're logged into design, this is the main page. Everything in design is organized in projects and your recent projects are right here across the middle. We're going to click new project. You can give it a name, select the aspect ratio that you want to work in, we'll say 16 by 9, then click apply. I've got a big blank canvas here, so I'm just going to drag in an image. With that on the canvas and selected, we have some tools up here that we can work with within the canvas. Over here on the right are results. Anything we generate in this project will show up in this panel. And if we switch over to the layers tab, we currently have a blank background layer. And then layer one is our car image. If you have more than one layer, you can move them around. You can also change the opacity and do some other stuff with layers. Within the project, you can also access generative and editing tools like text to image, image to image, AI video, the AI editor, enhance and upscale, and several other things. Now that we've got the quick lay of the land, with our image selected on the canvas, we'll come right below it where it says one layer selected, chat editor, and we'll click that button. It opens up this prompt box, and here we just tell it in natural language what we want it to do. We're going to say remove the birds from the sky, leave the clouds and the rest of the image unchanged. Next we can select the model, flux one context or chat GPT. We'll start with flux one context. For the aspect ratio, I've been leaving that on default and it follows the same aspect ratio as my image, but you do have quite a few different aspect ratios to choose from. Then we'll come over and click the generate button and with flux one context, it costs six credits. And we've got a new result in our results panel. We'll just hover over that and preview and by golly, the birds are gone and the rest of the image looks good. Next, I want to change the color of the car, but this time I'm going to click chat editor under this image in our results panel. If I were to come back and select the image on the canvas and go to chat editor from there, I'd be working with this original image that has the birds in it. And I don't want to do that. I want to work with the image where the birds are removed, this one over here. So just below that result where the birds are removed, I'll click chat editor. My prompt box pops up and I've got change the car's color from red to turquoise blue. We're going to leave it on flux one content and default. Those are the settings that we just used, so they're already in there. We will click generate, and over in our results, we have a turquoise blue car. Now, if this didn't turn out, you're like, no, that's not the color I was going for. You probably would want to come back to this last version where we had gotten rid of the birds, but before we made a color change and start with the color change fresh from this image. The fewer edits and generations you can make to get from where you are to where you want to be will help you with that quality loss issue. But I'm okay with this turquoise, so let's click chat editor. You can see here in the prompt box, it's showing us that it's working with this image of the teal blue car from up here, not necessarily what's on our canvas. We're going to say put an old barn in the background and click generate. And sure enough, we've got an old barn in the background. There's a few more things we're going to do with this, and I can click chat editor right here to make my next change, and it'll use the image of the blue turquoise car as it's showing us here in the prompt box for our next change. If I made a boo-boo, I can just hit the X button and make that go away. But I could also at any point here just double click on one of these results 
and add it to my canvas. Now it didn't get rid of our original image. If we come over to the layers tab, you'll see that our original is right underneath of this one. If we turn off this top layer, well then our red one's right there. I'm gonna come back to the results page and with this on the canvas, we can either go from the chat editor under this image or we could just select the layer in the canvas. It shows one layer selected and click chat editor. I'm gonna say make it a sunset with a warm orange sky, leave the model and the aspect ratio and click generate. And here we've got a sunset with a warm orange sky. Now I wanna try a little bit of a style change. So I'm gonna click chat editor on the image where we have the sunset. And we're gonna try and make the image look like a 1950s postcard illustration. We'll click generate. And here's our 1950s postcard. I wasn't expecting the barn to turn red, but you know what? Even though our original barn was brown, when we did the sunset image, it does kind of have a orangey reddish thing going on. So I guess that makes sense. All right, let's come back over to our canvas. We're gonna get rid of this image, this layer off our canvas. I just, I have it selected, I'll click delete. Now we're back to our original starting image. And now we wanna try with ChatGPT. So I'll select this image on our canvas. I'll click chat editor. I'm copying and pasting to make sure we use the exact same prompt, which is remove the birds from the sky, leave the clouds, and the rest of the image unchanged. I'll switch the model from Flux1 Context to ChatGPT. Now with ChatGPT, you only have three aspect ratios to choose from, square, landscape, or portrait. Landscape is the closest to what we're starting with, so that's what I'm gonna stick with. Then we'll come over and click the Generate button. Now ChatGPT is considerably more expensive at 35 credits. I cut out the processing time, but ChatGPT is also considerably slower than Flux1 Context. I'm not sure if it actually had to remove those birds or if just enough time had passed that they flew south for the winter. Anyway, indeed the birds are gone. So right below this image where the birds are removed, we'll click Chat Editor. Pop in our same prompt, change the car's color from red to turquoise blue, leave everything else the same. We're sticking with ChatGPT and click generate. And our car's back from Mako with its turquoise blue paint job. Now at this point, two edits in with ChatGPT, I'm starting to notice some things like in the grass here on the right, it's looking a little bit less realistic and a little more like painterly or something. But let's keep going. We'll go from our turquoise blue, click the chat editor right under that. Now it's time for put an old barn in the background and click generate. And here's our barn in the background by ChatGPT. And I think I'm starting to pick up on that yellow tint or warmth that ChatGPT seems to add. But let's go on to our next prompt right under this image. We'll click chat editor, make it sunset with a warm orange sky. Generate, and we've got a sunset. Definitely a warm orange sky. Now let's take this one into the chat editor and make it look like a 1950s postcard illustration. And here's ChatGPT's version of the 1950s postcard. It's a little bit grainy and it's made some changes to our image. I'm gonna double click it and put it on the canvas so we can look at it. I'll come over to the layers tab. There's our original before we made any changes. And then here's where we ended up with ChatGPT at the final edit with the postcard. Looks like our, our spot back here on the rear quarter turned yellow. It's made our marker lights red. I'm not real sure about that choice. And it's made the tires and wheels completely different than what our original was. But hey, for an illustrated postcard, that might be just fine. Now I'm gonna come back and select our original image and below it, I'm gonna click chat editor. You might've noticed that there's this plus button here and you can add a second image in. So we'll click that button. You can either select your image from the canvas. If it was on there, we've only got the one. So I'm gonna bring it in from the computer. You can either click here to open your Explorer or just drag it in, which is what I'm gonna do. And this is the image I just dropped in. I'm gonna say the man is leaning on the red car on a dirt road. I'm trying to tell it that I want this car and this road. I don't really want the background from the other image. I just want the guy from the other image. We'll try it with Flux1 Context, leave the size on default, and I'll click Generate. Now this is gonna cost 12 credits because we have two images here. And you can go up to four images. We'll click Generate, and there's our guy leaning on the car. Now let's try it with ChatGPT. And by the way, we don't have to just go from the original image or an image we edited with ChatGPT to use ChatGPT to make another edit. 
For instance, I can come down here to this image where we used Flux Context to get rid of the birds. I can use that one, click Chat Editor, and now I'm using the image that was edited by Context, but I can switch the model to ChatGPT and continue editing from there. I'll switch the aspect ratio to landscape, and then we need to add the image of our guy, enter the same exact prompt. With ChatGPT, it's 35 credits, even with multiple images, and you can add up to five when you're using ChatGPT. We'll go ahead and click Generate. And here's ChatGPT's version of the man from one image leaning on the car from the other. Now, ChatGPT didn't keep our guy as consistent as what Context did. I noticed some difference in his hair, his face, his jacket, uh, the color of his t-shirt. But if we just needed a guy that looked like the one we provided and not exactly him, this would probably be okay. So based on these and all my experimenting with Flux Context and ChatGPT in the chat editor, how did they compare? Well, overall, for me, Flux Context has better consistency. It generally does better at not changing things that I didn't ask it to change. That's not always the case, but usually. I also like that Flux Context can handle a 16 by nine aspect ratio and not chop the sides off and make it landscape. Flux Context is much faster and it's cheaper at only six credits if you're working with one image compared to the 35 credits for ChatGPT. Now, Flux Context does struggle more with perspective or proportions in getting things that you add to be the right size. It also has a known issue of quality loss in certain areas each time you do another edit. Now for ChatGPT, the aspect ratios it can produce are limited, it's also slower and more expensive. I'm not a big fan of the yellowing that it seems to add a little more yellow to each edit on top of each edit. It's also been somewhat less reliable. Now this may just be a temporary issue that's already fixed, but in my experimentation there were several times where I sent an edit with ChatGPT and it came back and said it failed due to an issue on OpenAI's end. Now for me, I'm probably gonna start with Flux Context and if something's not working out, then I might switch over and give ChatGPT a try. If for nothing else, because Flux Context is so much cheaper and faster. If it doesn't work, I really haven't lost too much. As far as the quality loss from one edit to another, a lot of that can be worked out using the upscale or enhance and upscale tools that are available here on Design. The quality loss issues that happen with Context seem like they'd be much easier to fix with upscaling compared to the weird plasticky thing that ChatGPT sometimes does. And to try and reduce the quality loss, we could try to make a few changes in one edit so that we're not editing an edit of an edited edit losing a little bit of quality with each one of those iterations. If you've got any tips, tricks, or ideas for using these editing models, please share them in the comments. Hey, my name is Bob. I appreciate you hanging out with me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining, and I hope you'll come back and see me in another video.